கருணார்ணவமாய் கருதக்கதி நல்கும் அருணாச்சல சிவம் ஈதா கருணார்ணவமாய் கருதக்கதி நல்கும் அருணாச்சல சிவம் ஈதா Namaste. Welcome to another episode of Ananya Bhakti. So today, <laughs> I have a real special treat for you, but you have to watch all the way to the end. And don't skip because the context is important, okay? So let's talk about true love. We will never agree to surrender ourselves to being without heart-melting, all-consuming, ecstatic love, rasa. So long as we desire to continue our present illusory and miserable existence as a finite individual, God will never force us to surrender to him. God loves us. Huh? He'll never force us, but he sure will bring his influence to bear. <laughs> indirectly huh? very subtly like a hammer <laughs> no what what he does is he sets up a situation where we can never be truly happy unless we surrender to him and why is that because he is the reservoir of ecstatic love And what do we want? <laughs> Unlimited ecstatic love. So because he's the ocean of love, huh? the Rasa Karuna Sindhu, and the, the ocean of compassion. So we have to surrender unto him because these other limited beings like us can never give us what we want. <laughs> That's the thing. We have accepted this limited existence, this very narrow mind and uh, extremely small, very uh, weak body. And it only exists for a short time and then it falls apart, goes away. And now we're mixed up with all these other beings in the same condition. How are we going to get from them all the love that we want and need? Huh? They're just not capable of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I took a survey <laughs> the last 70 years, and they all came up wanting. And if we're honest with ourselves, we all have the same experience. So the only way we're going to get the kind of love and affection and beauty and wisdom and everything else that we want is from God. He's the only game in town. <laughs> so let's go on. However, by the supreme power of his own being, God will always shape our external life favorably and guide us internally. He gradually will kindle in us the clarity of true wisdom the ability to discriminate and distinguish the real from the unreal. Thereby, he steadily cultivates within us the true love to surrender entirely to him. So there's true love and then there's false love. The false love is when we get attached to something limited and temporary and then want to satisfy ourselves by that love. But that love is not going to help us. I mean, it's going to pass some time maybe, and it, it's going to give us a little tickle, huh? but it can never satisfy the deep thirst that we have either to give or receive love. Why? It's not the ocean. So we may find a nice girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, huh? and we may pass some time in 
nice pastimes, huh? but it always comes to an end. Or some problems develop that force us apart. Either way, we wind up lamenting and we start to look at life as a tragedy, but it's not. Like Ramana says, everything will work out in the end. <laughs> That's just one more experience on a long, long chain that brings us step by step back to the feet of God because that's the only way we're going to get the satisfaction we want. That's the only way uh, we can hook into or connect up with a reservoir of unlimited love. So might as well just take the hint and do it now, right? <laughs> the true love that we require is the love for our essential, non-dual, self-conscious being, I, I. But as long as we mistake our self to be this thinking mind, we are seemingly separated from our true nature, the real state of just being. Our real state of just being is completely devoid of thinking, and therefore also devoid of the illusion of duality, which is created by thinking. If I have the love that I really want, the mind is simply a substitute for that love. It's simply an adaptation, huh? an imitation that we accept for the time being, knowing deep down that it can't really satisfy us because why? The mind is based on division. It's based on discrimination. It's based on making a difference. And that difference means duality. Duality hurts. It hurts to separate ourselves from our real being. It's like being in the desert with no water. It's painful. And we have to tolerate this pain constantly in order to remain as a separate individual. So in other words, we're constantly suffering simply by the nature of our being in a dualistic world. So sooner or later, we're gonna hit bottom. It could happen today, or it could happen in a million lifetimes. It's up to you. And then we say, okay, okay, God, <laughs> okay, I'm going to start playing by your rules now. The thinking and duality knowing mind cannot avoid imagining our thought free, non dual, real being to be something other than what we now feel ourselves to be. Therefore, the love we have for our own real state of just being is, at first, experienced as love for something other than oneself. In other words, we can't conceive of our original state, our non-dual consciousness. Huh? So we have to imagine that that state is another being, another individual like ourselves, but just better, <laughs> perfect, unlimited, and so on. So that's our idea of God. And whenever we come into the dualistic state, we have to imagine this being God in order to explain what we experience. We can't take responsibility for it because if we did, that would mean the end of our dualistic experience and merging back into the self. So we avoid it by imagining God to be something else, whereas what it really is is simply a reflection of our real self in the fragmented mind. Therefore, in our struggle to return to our source, which is our real self-conscious being, our love for being expresses itself as a mixture of dualistic love for God and non-dual love for our being. In the beginning of bhakti, we feel like I and God are two different individuals. And we see this, it's very common. Huh? 
Most people, when they think of God or worship God or love God, think, I am worshiping, loving God as a different individual. So we have a relationship. That relationship is called rasa. And the truth of rasa, rasa tattva, is something we'll go into in a later series. But first, I want to give you the technique of how you can approach God and turn that dualistic love into non-dual love for the real being. And that's the, the uh, special thing at the end of this video. To the degree that our mind is impelled by its own lingering desire to arise and be active, we experience our love for being in its dualistic form of love for God. To the degree that our mind subsides in our essential, thought-free, self-conscious being, we experience our love for being in its true, non-dual form of self-love. Self with a capital S. That isn't love of the ego. Because by approaching God, the ego becomes smaller and smaller and finally disappears. So when we talk about self-love or self-consciousness with a capital S, the ego is long gone to even get to that stage. So now here's, here's the treat I want to give you. I want to give you the technique that I use to get into this self-consciousness. And this is, you know, when I wake up at like two or three in the morning and do my sadhana. So at first, I'll just lay there in bed. If I have to go to the bathroom, I'll get up and go to the bathroom, come back, drink water, whatever it takes to have no bodily needs at that time. Okay, just a complete relaxation. So I call this the dissolution phase. The first thing is to concentrate and relax the body. So you go through the whole body from bottom to top or top to bottom or outside to inside or however you have to do it. And you relax each separate part. If there's any tension at all, you put your mind into it and relax it. And I'm sure you'll find, as most people do, that you're carrying tension in different parts of your body. And these tensions are either desires or memories or the anticipation of something. In any case, you have to let them go. The body has no needs. Actually, it should be asleep, <laughs> but you're awake. So let the body just relax and even sleep if it wants. That's okay. You still remain aware. And if you fall asleep, no big deal. You simply begin again when you wake up. So the next thing is allow the senses. Huh? If there's a noise, let it go. If there's some light, just let it happen. If there's anything at all going on around you, which it shouldn't be at three o'clock in the morning, but if there is, allow it to pass through you. Don't resist it. Don't judge it. Don't try to react to it. And certainly don't tense up around it. Uh, stay open. No resistance. Let it pass through you and relax the body more and more. In parallel with this, let the breath go too. You don't have to breathe. The body will breathe for you, just like it does when you're asleep. In fact, if the body is totally relaxed, you're not trying to do anything, the body will think it's asleep anyway. <laughs> so it'll just start to breathe automatically, quietly and deeply. This is surrender, prapti. Allow it to happen. Uh, this is what happens anyway when you're asleep. So you're not going to drown. <laughs> you're not going to suffocate. You're simply going to lie there without any tension in the body. 
and be very quiet, not making any effort, not making any tension, just allowing the body to be. Next, release all the mental tensions, the ego. So after the physical tensions are all relaxed, now you go into the mind and search out the mental tensions. And what are they? Desire, clinging, fear, expectations, memories, time, space, objects, motion, effort, and so on. These are all mental tensions huh? that we hold. And this is the basis of the ego. This is the basis of our fragmented individual identity that we hold on to all these mental tensions. Forget them. Huh? Just allow them to dissipate. Don't worry, they'll come back. <laughs> At least the first few times you try this. You'll find as you go deeper and deeper that there is a core of silence in the mind. Letting go of all these mental tensions letting go of all the physical tensions. Just drop the body, let it be. If anything happens, let it pass. And just go into that silence within. And what you'll find as you concentrate the mind, in the beginning you concentrate here. But as the silence deepens, as the breathing relaxes, as the mind relaxes, you're center of attention will gradually move down toward the heart. And you'll be making less and less effort to concentrate because letting go all these tensions. Now, there's nothing to distract you. So concentration isn't even necessary. So let the awareness sink naturally into the heart. Not the physical heart on the left side, but the spiritual heart on the right. And something will happen. I can't tell you what it's going to be because it's different with everybody. And it's even different each time. But you'll start getting messages. You start to feel a presence. That presence is the self. Like today, for example, in the beginning of concentration, You'll often see flashes of white or blue light in different parts of the visual field. That's normal. That means the concentration is getting good, uh, good enough to call meditation. Then with deep relaxation, as you sink deeper and deeper into the heart, you'll feel a presence and that presence, well, to me this morning, revealed itself as a beautiful light, uh, milky, spacious, gentle, like moonlight, uh, very romantic, something very loving about this light. And what it is, of course, is your own, <laughs> this is your own light, <laughs> your own illumination, the illumination of the self. So that's it without making any effort, without thinking about concentration or thinking about anything, really. Just be there. Just be with that light. Be with that presence of the self. This is self-consciousness. And over time, it will mature into self-love. And if you can't do it right away in the beginning, that's okay. Just go through the stages and try again and again. Practice makes perfect. Remember trying to learn how to ride a bicycle? <laughs> it's the same thing. You're going to fail in the beginning. But if you keep trying again and again, then gradually you'll become skilled at it. And like any skill, over time, you'll become stronger and stronger until you can meditate. You can be in the self and aware of the self in any situation, at any time. Om Tat Sat. 
ओम हरि ही ओम करुणारणवम करदी नलगु अरुणाचल शिव गीता 